let's talk about NTSC and ATSC. NTSC came about in the early 1950s. It was a committee assigned by the FCC and manufacturers that came up with the standard for television. How many scan lines, how many lines were in the vertical blanking interval that, didn't, that weren't seen by the actual image, the frequencies that were allocated for broadcast, um, what you had within that bandwidth of the individual channel frequencies, and so forth. And so the NTSC, and, in, and, and primarily in 1956, they came up with a standard for color television because what happened was there was this war between RCA and CBS. CBS had a sequential color system. RCA had an integrated color system or a, a, a upward compatible system where the people that had existing black and white televisions could see the color transmission, not with color, but see it in black and white. And so whenever the transmitter was transmitting, if you had a black and white set, you could see it in black and white. If you had a color set, you could see it in color. The CBS system being sequential was not compatible. So you, you were broadcasting, you had to have a color TV to see that channel, but you couldn't see it in black and white. And so RCA pushed the Congress and really this committee, and they came up with the NTSC color standard, which was a 525 line, four by three, full color system. Used a system called color plexing, where the color was then put into the black and white signal where you could actually decode the color for color TVs, and if you're watching in black and white, it didn't hurt anything. There were some minor changes with it to make it work, but as far as the frequencies and so forth, but that worked, that won out. Even though the CBS system was superior as far as color quality, the CBS system went on later to become something like what they had in France, the CCAM system. In France, you had the CCAM system, which was sequential color, made beautiful pictures. In, in the rest of Europe, Germany and so forth, they had something similar to NTSC, but it was called PAL, phase alternate lock, which was better than NTSC system two. 525 for the uh, NTSC, six, I think around 625 for PAL, and I think it was even uh, up around 800 or something for CCAM, I'm not sure. CCAM had the best picture. It was also used in Russia. Uh, PAL was the second best picture, and then NTSC was probably the worst picture, even though it was satisfactory enough to make a pretty good standard def uh, picture for most viewers in the United States. It was also used in Japan, but it, it was determined by this NTSC, National Television Standardization Committee. Okay, later on when we decided to have the change from NTSC, standard def television, to, to high definition television, we moved from an aspect, from a scan rate that was 480i, which actually meant you had 400, 480 visible lines in your standard def picture, even though an actual NTSC you had 480 and you had another 45 lines that was in vertical blanking that you never saw. <coughs> they stuck closed caption and stuff like that in there. So you had 480i, which was the similar to NTSC standard, and, and that's what we had up until they came up with the HD standards. And they never think, the problem is the ATSC committee never really standardized fully, so what you had was a couple of different standards. The, pri the primary one become, became uh, 1080i, uh, and that was the standard for broadcast television, and then 720p, which was the uh, standard that Microsoft really wanted. And so even though the broadcast was mainly 1080i, it, uh, you do have occasional shooting in 720p. And actually the, the de facto internet standard is 720p. If you take a 1080i video and you put it on YouTube, it's gonna convert it, be converted down to 720p. And, and that's, the, that's basically the internet standard. You don't hardly ever see uh, 1080i on the internet. Now, <coughs> you may see a few 1080p's. Now, what's P? I, uh, I stands for interlaced, right? And P stands for progressive. And so, basically, when you're interlaced, you have fields. Two fields make a frame. <coughs> 
And so it scans one field and then it scans the same field, another field, odd field, even field to make a frame. In progressive, you just start at the top, you scan at the bottom, start at the top again. And so progressive works a lot better for computers. And the only reason we had interlaced was the electronic circuitry in the old television sets couldn't handle progressive frequencies. Okay, now that the, the technology is better, progressive is a lot better way to go. In the old days in NTSC, the frame rate for television was 30, and the field rate was 60, and it was roughly related to the line frequency. In actuality, the frame rate now is 29.958 and also 59, and so the reason it's changed is because we moved to color, and we added a color burst signal into all of that, a 3.579545, that all had to be related to each other mathematically so you had to change the frame and the field rate in old NTSC television to make it work with the color burst which was a frequency of 3.579545 megahertz. The basic ATSC standard is basically 1080i and, and it also accepts 720p but for broadcast it's still uh, 1080i and of course the, what was strange was the bandwidth was an increase for the television channel the television channel for analog was 6 megahertz. The ch television channel for high definition is 6 megahertz. And so you didn't really have a lot of allotment of additional bandwidth to give you a little more detail in digital.